So I want us to all make a very simple application together and follow along with this. It, it's kind of important that we don't complicate things at first. I'm going to say File, New, Android Application Project, and I'll call this first GUI. And it warns us that com.example is not what we should be doing, so I'm going to change that and put my first name there. I'm also going to simplify things by making this a one level, one API level, so it, it doesn't have to be compatible with the earlier levels. And I'm going to say, don't help me with the GUI. I don't want um, a whole lot of stuff added that I don't understand. So we're going to go for the simplest one. And I think almost all the rest of it we can allow to default. We don't care about the icons right now. This one I want us to use an empty activity instead of a blank activity. The name of the activity, main activity, that would be fine. And let's see what gets generated for us. So here we have the hello world application and we've looked at these folders a little bit and you'll start to get comfortable with them. So we have some Java code that it generated for us. We have a layout for the main activity. We have a manifest that we haven't looked at yet. And the class library that we have for the Android SDK is for level 19, 4.4.2, which is the current one as of the date of this video. So let's go and look at the layout. The activity main XML, it opened this for us. If, it, if you can't find it again, it's in the resources folder, the res, and it's under layout, and they are XML files. So here's the layout for the activity. If we double click here, we get some more room to work with. In the old days, you had to build the, the GUI practically by just editing the XML. And we're a little bit better off now. We have a graphical layout editor. And what I want us to do is to put a button on there. So let's pick um, button. And as we move it around in here, we see different things happening. We might say, um, Let's put this one towards the top. So center horizontal and below. So now we have a button called button. Actually the button is called button one and it has text on it button. So the properties of the widgets are over here in the properties box and the the the, uh, the palette, the tool palette that we can put onto the GUI is over here and it depends on how how much you want to work with XML but the default layout manager is the relative layout manager and they helped us when we dropped this button onto the GUI they generated this XML for us Remember that we saw that it was going to do a center horizontal and it put a margin from the top of 57 density pixels. So let's go back here and let's fix the properties of this button a little bit. I don't like my buttons to be called button 1. This is going to be an identifier, I mean a Java variable name. And so you don't want these to start with capital letters, because that wouldn't be Java convention. But I don't want them called button 1 through button 24. Um, let's put something on that button first. Let's say that this button is going to be called go to green. And if we click out of that box, it will change the 
what's written on the button. And now I'm going to call this go to green button. Now, because we changed a variable name, it's going to have to go through every place that it put that variable already and update it. And I want it to do that. And I always want it to do that. Um, no, let's, let's let it tell us when it's doing it for now. So if we look around in the properties for the button, You'll start to get comfortable with these. I clicked off the button. So, um, this widget, which is a button, has layout parameters that decides where it's going to wind up. And then it has the style issues, style text, the hint. And then the text view, everyone else would call this a label, but it is a, a text view which is on the button, and the characteristics of that text view. What else do we have here? There's a whole lot of properties. Now there's a view. One of the things you can do with a view is specify what, to happen, what happens when someone clicks on the button the on click. So I'm going to say on go to green. So we're making an, a, a method name that is an event handler when someone clicks on that button I want this method to execute. So the on click property of the button we can specify what method will execute when someone clicks on that button. Okay, so let's save this. Double click up here to bring back this on the left. Let's go over to the main activity. So here's the code for the main activity. And it has one method in it, onCreate. The onCreate method happens only one time when the app is created. That makes sense, right? Okay, so things that you want to happen only once happen in the onCreate method. And one of the things that it does for us automatically is it sets the view for this activity to be activity main, the one we were just working in. So an activity has associated with it a view. I'm going to make a public void on go to green. So this is the event handler for the button we put um, the button that we put on our layout and it takes a view. View doesn't compile so let's hover over it and the first option is to import android.view and we need to do that. So what do we want to do when someone clicks on our button? I would like to do something just so that I'm sure that this method did get executed. So let's right away learn how to do a log. Let's do a log debug log.d and it takes two strings one should have something to do with the application and the second one should be the debug message that you're interested in. So I'm going to put I here, the go to green button. And this doesn't compile for the same reason. Hover over 
the log. This is a class provided to us specifically to log things when we need to know that they've happened. And let's do a save all. Well, I wonder if it worked. We did a lot, didn't we? We looked at how to build a GUI. Well, we looked at how to put a button on a form. And we learned how to change the identifier for the button. We called it go to green button. We learned how to specify the method that would be the handler for this button. And how to implement the handler. Well, I'm going to run this and we'll see what happens. So right click run as an Android application. I had an emulator running already. Okay, so this takes so very long that what we should be looking at to make sure something is going on is the console. And just because it says console doesn't mean you're looking in the right place. There's a bunch of different consoles. So go over here and say display selected console and we want to look at the Android console. So it was the one that um, that we want to look at while we're launching this. And it says it's doing something. It's waiting for home. Okay, so there it is. It's um It is emulator 5554, and we're waiting for it to power up. Okay, look at what happened now. We're uploading this um, APK onto the emulator, and now we're installing the application into the, the device, the virtual device. If something goes wrong in this process, if it just is wonky, it hangs up for people sit there and wait for a very long time. So now we're installing I've always wondered why they decide to say put this on the default screen of the virtual device. Connect your charger. Okay, and it said starting the activity, main activity, and if we unlock this device, grab the lock and drag it out here, we now have our first GUI application running in the emulator. So now I said we wanted to make sure that something happens when we click on this button. And how will we know that something has happened? Okay, so the logcat is one of your best tools. I am not sure what happened there. Let's go back to the emulator and see if this emulator is talking to the logcat. And it, it looks like it isn't. Okay, so instead of looking at the log cat now, we're going to go immediately to look at the DDMS. So this is a, a more powerful tool for debugging. Okay, you won't see DDMS up here perhaps. Um, you have to open this as a new perspective. So if you open perspective and select DDMS, you will add it to um, one of the perspectives that you can select while you're doing your Android programming. 
Okay, so the DDMS, this is kind of a look inside of the device that we're running. In this case, it's a virtual device. So we have an emulator called 5554. And it does seem to be doing something. So let's go out here and click on go to green and it says, I hear the go to green button, and then a whole bunch of error messages. Well, apparently this emulator does not have the ability to make clicking noises, and it's getting error messages on that. Let's clear the, clear the log cat, and flip back to the emulator, so see what happens in the logcat. You have different levels of messages. And the tag that we put in, sometimes it's easier if you say, I want to filter the messages in the logcat. I wonder if I did that right. Okay, you have to you have to type something in that's in the text. I thought I could type what was in the tag. It's a while since I've done this. So now we can hear only the things that we are interested in hearing. Okay, let's go back to the Java perspective and now this logcat is working. For some reason it wasn't connected to the emulator that we were running before and this is one of the wonky things I'm not sure why that happened um, but it is kind of useful that we went immediately to the DDMS the Delvic debug Delvic debug what is DDMS I'll have to look that up now okay you guys Google for it what does DDMS stand for you can find out everything about the devices that you're working on in here. It's really kind of neat. Even if it's not an emulator, if it's a phone that's plugged in, um, you can use the, the DDMS to look around on the device. Okay, go back to the Java perspective. Let's look at what we've done in the XML file. So we have a button and we called it go to green button. It's a text view kind of an odd, no, there's a text view on the button. You might have an image view on a button if you wanted a button that has a, a picture on it. So how did um, Android take this XML file and draw it. And how are we going to get access to this identifier? We need a handle to the button to do things with it. Um, so far we haven't needed that, but we will need one. And we talked about this gen file folder. And the gen folder has in it a file called R. So this is the class R, the resources. We don't edit this code, it gets generated for us. So automatically they build a bunch of identifiers. So this big ugly hex number is the identifier for our green button. And the XML file gets taken apart and it draws the user interface by generating the Java code that would do that. And we use the R file, the constants in the R file,
to get handles on the widgets that we dropped onto the GUI. We don't know how to do that yet, but here's an example. R.layout.activityMain is the, the handle for the XML file, this whole XML file. Okay, your tools. Look at the console when you're launching so that you can tell that it's actually happening. Look at the log cat and filter it so that you can hear your messages. Set up your DDMS perspective so that you can look around inside of the device and so far we don't know very much about what's going on inside the device. But the log cat is over here and we can tell that we have one emulator running and it is this one that they called 5554. Very, very good. If that didn't work, the best thing to do is to throw it away and go back to the beginning. Don't try and fix it. Um, if it's wonky, throw this away and start again. Eventually, when we get good at it, um, it, it, we'll be able to find out what's wrong with things. But for now, throw it away and start again. Okay, that was a big step. 